like and subscribe on the way in the door, my people. I hope you all are having a truly, truly fantastic day today on this Monday. And uh, as always on Monday, I like to take the time to give thanks to the people who gave super thanks throughout the week and address some of the topics uh, from those super thanks. And uh, you see the title of the video, so that, that comes from one of the questions in the super thanks, or topics, I should say. Uh, but without further ado, shout out to Shifting to Success. Uh, thank you so, so much for the $20 super thanks. And he says, great content on comment. Yo, I have a question for you. What was the reason LeBron said was why he left Cleveland to join the Miami Heat? And what was the narrative his supporters said? Well, uh, as far as I can remember, and I think this is this is a let me let me check. Matter of fact, let, let me. Yeah, so quoted from LeBron James, he said, "I came to Miami to win for one reason and one reason only to win championships. That was my goal." That's the only reason why I teamed up with D-Wade and Bosch, because I felt like I couldn't do it in Cleveland. I tried to recruit guys to come to Cleveland, tried to go get help from upstairs, and it wasn't happening. So this is what LeBron James said, and I feel like, you know, that, that stuff kind of spiraled in the media to all the narratives about you know, him dragging bums to the final and and all that kind of stuff. Uh, which, I guess, <laughs> looking back on it, <laughs> you know, uh, a lot of these narratives are created by LeBron James himself. But, uh, so here's the thing, though. LeBron James only has three 60-plus win seasons in his entire 21 career. And fanboys, this is... Something you should know. Guess when two of those 60-plus win seasons came? When he was in Cleveland. So the, the so-called dragging bums to the finals thing is like those teams were able to win 60-plus games in the regular season. So again, you know, it, it just goes to show you how they overblow Everything that has to do with LeBron James, you know, they want to make it seem like he has the worst of the worst of the worst. And, you know, so that when he wins, it seems like some Herculean feat. But the, the reality of it is, is LeBron James just didn't have what it takes. He just didn't have the leadership to lead that team to a championship. You know, Le LeBron James, again, has has terrible leadership skills, you know, and and I don't really think there's an argument to be made for him being a good leader. How how can you be a good leader uh, when your answer is to just jump ship? Again, uh, two out of three of his sixty plus win seasons came with Cleveland, and that's the Cleveland before he went to Miami. But uh, shout out again to at Shifting to Success. Again, uh, I cannot thank you enough for your support of the channel. Uh, next up, we got at G, the great one with the $5 super thanks. And he says, uh, and this comes from my don't talk about LeBron James stats when he still loses with stack teams video. <laughs> Uh, and he says, uh, stats can easily be ma manipulated. All you have to do is stay in games where your team is either blowing out someone or your team is being blown out and you keep putting up numbers with little resistance against you due to the fact that the game is a blowout. It's easy to manipulate stats. All you have to do is tell the media that it's your team's teammates team and then turn around and attempt more shots per game than said teammates ad <laughs> manipulating numbers is easy all you have to do is never play defense and never play back to backs uh, even though they are nationally televised games and you are the face of the league this way you stay fresh as possible and keep your averages up 
Besides, your paid media puppets won't focus on you standing around on defense, not hustling for loose balls. They will defend your behavior by telling everyone how many years you've been playing as if that makes it justifiable. Absolutely. It says, it's crazy that his stands can't see through the BS. It just shows you how weak-minded they actually are. LeBron is the poster boy for cheating the game. He is a pathological, pathological liar. That's one of the most glaring characteristics of a cheater. Keep the content coming, uncommon sense. Thank you so much, at G, the great one for the $5 super thanks. And, yeah, I mean, this is all facts. This is all stuff that we know. And, uh, you know, he talks about um, how weak-minded LeBron fanboys actually are. And, and that that's a fact because, again, I feel like they take our, after their king, who is also weak-minded. Like, LeBron James is a mentally weak superstar in so many ways. He was too mentally weak to tough it out in Cleveland. He's too men mentally weak to uh, be confrontational with his teammates so that he can actually lead them. You know, he's too mentally weak to be willing to, to take the big shot every time or most times. Apparently, he's too mentally weak to just do something basic like admit to flopping. So, yeah, a absolutely. Uh, again, shout out to at G the great one. Thank you so, so much for the five dollar super thanks. And thank you so, so much for your continued support of the channel. And next up, we have uh, one hawk with the five dollar super thanks. Thank you so much for that. And uh, this comes from that same video about uh, don't talk to me about LeBron James stats when he still loses with stacked teams. Um, and he just simply says, thanks, brutal facts. Keep breaking their weak ass spirits. <laughs> uh, you can guarantee that on this channel, that's what we will be doing. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for the five dollar super thanks. And uh, up next, we have at 43 Vert with the $10 super thanks. And he just simply says thanks. And that comes from my This is LeBron James Cheating the Game video. Thank you so much for your continued support. I know that you say that you and your wife haven't been feeling well. I hope you are both on the mend and get back to 100% soon. Uh, shout out to you both. And last but not least, we have at Snug Chamberlain 9986. And this is actually the title of the video uh, with the $2 super thanks. And he says, thanks. Just wanted to get your input on the bagless one statement he made on his ridiculous podcast with JJ Reddit. Says that. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry, I'm, I, I'm laughing, but he he's wording this how exactly how I would talk about it because i would say he made on his ridiculous podcast it's, that's <laughs> that is the appropriate description of that podcast <laughs> uh, i'm sorry that, let, let, let me start this over so he says thanks just wanted to get your input on the bagless one statement he made on his ridiculous podcast with jj reddick says that young players bother the f out of him by playing their matchups because they think they have a bag I just find it funny coming from someone who stopped playing defense years ago, even dating back to the 2011 finals. And what does he mean by it bothers him to have a bag to beat your matchup? Does he not have one? Uh, does the put your head down and ram and barrel through the lane not classify as a bag? Well, it, that's debatable <laughs> if it classifies as a bag. Uh, because that's what he's been doing for 20 years, and that's his bag, and he sounds stupid and ridiculous. Just a sound bite to go on that ridiculous podcast when he should be focused on his team and trying to make it out of play in contention. Jordan, Magic, Bird, Kobe, Moses, Malone, Kareem, you name them. None of them guys would run to a radio station <laughs> to report of their thoughts because they thought because they would be working on their games. None of the guys I named would be concerned about another player's bag. They would be ultra laser focused on themselves and how to beat the competition. That's what separates them from LeBron. I mean, what kind of guy starts a podcast? <laughs> 
Hey, uh, yeah, yeah, you, you, straight, you, straight facts right here. <laughs> straight facts. Okay, let me let me find where I was. He says, uh, "What kind of guy starts a podcast at the middle to end season when they need every game?" <laughs> Shows what's his focus. He knows they are a better team without him. That's why he started this ridiculous podcast to spread his lies and narratives. So what do you think? Is some truth to what the self-proclaimed self-proclaimed goat said about young players and having bags? Or do you think this guy is a joke and just mad because in 20 years he ne- never developed a bag? What do you think? Wow, good, uh, great question, great comment. <laughs> Shout out to at Snug Chamberlain 99. 86, uh, I I think you kind of hit it right on the money. I mean, so I watched that clip. And uh, the first thing, I, I'm going to go ahead and say this. this and, and we all probably knew that this was the case. But this podcast really is simply for a way to for LeBron James to try to s- promote how smart he think he is. And for them to take shots at the... Uh, Past generations of basketball. So during that segment where he mentions that uh, he hates when players think that they can just go one on one because they got the bag or whatever, and you know they they have to be able to read the plays. And he what he says again to me is tr- trying to knock the generations from the past. He was like, uh, "This is not Jordan versus Bird, Nintendo." Uh, so first of all, to even bring up Michael Jordan's name in that scenario, uh, Michael Jordan, to me, arguably was one of the best readers of defense in the history of the game. Again, to me, this is another thing that I would say separated Mike from Kobe is that I thought Mike read defenses better than Kobe. It's like Michael Jordan almost looked like he knew what what was going to happen before it happened at all times. You know, not to mention having the greatest defense to offense sequence in the history of sports, arguably, with the 1998 finals, getting the steal from Carl Malone and coming down and sinking a jumper over Byron Russell. Using his one on one skills, his bag, <laughs> and winning the championship. And, you know, uh, it's funny because I, in my mind, I always compare this to LeBron James, the block he got. In 2016, and I always thought I said, now if LeBron James had got that block and then made the shot that Kyrie made, then he would have a little bit more ammunition to talk. I still wouldn't think he was the goat, and not even close because he flops. But <laughs> at least he would have had a great, a truly great sequence in a championship run if he had made the the block. And then hit the shot that Kyrie hit. But, yeah, now I mean, I, I totally agree. Now, I, I think part of it is just, you know, LeBron James knows he doesn't have that kind of bag, period. And and LeBron James is trying to highlight how high of an IQ he thinks he, he has. I mean, really, this whole podcast just seems like an ego stroking fest between him and JJ. You know, it's just like, Let's show the world how smart we are at basketball while trashing the older generations and while glorifying ourselves. And, you know, the the whole thing is this. But, hey, one thing I can say is it it does appear that there will be a lot of great content <laughs> uh, for the people who like criticizing LeBron. They're, they're about to get an overload of content because this guy doesn't know how to stop himself. He doesn't know how to stop himself from putting his foot in his mouth. He doesn't know how to stop himself from looking, you know, like the food every, that everybody thinks he is. <laughs> he doesn't know how to help himself. It's like he just cannot help but do it to himself. You know, that need for self-praise, that need for self-promotion, and then at the same time want to beg everybody for respect while he keeps making little uh Sly remarks about players of the past. But yeah. Anyway, uh, shout out to at Snug Chamberlain 9986. Uh, shout out to everyone who continues to support this channel. I cannot thank you guys enough and why I'm thinking about it. So I want to start a new segment on this channel 
where I have some of you guys, if you guys like have a way to record your voice and have, you know, something you want to talk about, basically, I want to have you record it. You know, it can be, I say, you know, three, three to four minutes long. Three to four minutes long, send it to my email, and then I'm going to do a show where I play it and kind of respond to some of the things that you say. So if any of you are, are interested in doing that, uh, my email is is on my page, and, and shoot me an email. And uh, yeah, because like I said, I can't thank everyone enough who supports this channel, and uh, a lot of you guys have very insightful things to say. And so I want to start a segment kind of highlighting some, some of those things. But anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Have you seen the second episode of the Ridiculous Podcast with uh, the Deer and the Deer Jr.? I guess apparently that's what we need to start calling him. Let me know what you guys think. You all have a truly fantastic day, and I'll see you next time. All right.